Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and this is my rig. It's a custom-built Main Gear Vibe chassis with Main Gear's fantastic Apex Liquid cooling system, and I helped build it with my buds at Main Gear at their headquarters in New Jersey just a little over a year ago. It's currently packing an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12-core CPU strapped into Gigabyte's Aorus X570 Master Motherboard, with 64 gigs of DDR4 3600 megahertz memory and a one terabyte gigabyte PCI Express 4 NVMe solid state drive and a four terabyte Samsung SATA SSD for bulk storage. Finally, I'm currently working and gaming with AMD's Radeon RX 6800 XT for my graphics firepower. And yes, as you can see, all of this is oh so cleanly lit with a nice white hue from the Vibe's customizable RGB lighting setup. Up. But even with all this glorious gaming PC muscle going on, it's time for an upgrade. A serious upgrade, in fact. Enter AMD's Ryzen 9 5950X. 16 cores and 32 threads of sweet Zen 3 goodness. And it's just a socket drop-in replacement away. Stay with me for a look at my upgrade efforts, along with a few tips, next. I had a ball building my Main Gear vibe with our friends at Main Gear, and I absolutely love this machine. It's so clean, so quiet, and so dang powerful that literally anything I can throw at it, it handles really well as it exists today. However, AMD's new Zen 3 architecture has me jonesing for that 16-core bad boy upgrade. So it's time to tear my baby down, carefully mind you. But first, we want to make sure we have the latest BIOS for our motherboard that sports AMD's new Agisa for Ryzen 5000 series processors. So we bop on over to Gigabyte site and grab the latest BIOS, which, as you can see, notes an Agisa Combo V2 update just dropped on December 3rd. Good deal. That's the BIOS image. We'll then drop into the ARS at BIOS app in the company's App Center utility for Windows. I know, I live dangerously sometimes. At any rate, we'll obviously need to complete this part of the BIOS preparation before we go tearing down the system and replacing the new Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core CPU in that socket, because otherwise it might not boot with the new chip installed, which would not be a good thing. Next, we have to drain the lifeblood from her beautiful icy veins with the help of this drain tube and pulling the plug carefully from this bottom drain port to attach the hose thusly should do the trick. Now we'll just tuck the hose into a bucket and unscrew the fill port cap above just a touch to breathe some air into the system and we should start to get our flow on. As you can see, however, this just drained the cooling liquid from the main distribution block. From there, I needed to get an extra set of hands to help hold the drain tube in the bucket while I tip the case all around in various directions to help drain the liquid out of the hardline tubing and partially out of the multiple radiators in the system and even the CPU cooling block. It takes some patience, I assure you. And while we're at it, we're going to exercise a bit more patience and remove our PSU intake filter for a bit of cleaning as well. Yuck. But a quick rinse and dry will take care of that. Now she's all prepped and mostly drained, save for a couple of spots where we can work with carefully and disassembly. First, let's pull the feed and return piping from the CPU block. Sometimes it takes a bit more elbow grease than you might think, but still firm and gentle, grasshopper. And now we're just four thumb screws away from freeing our old Ryzen 9 3900X from the socket. This might be a good time to slap on some nitrile gloves so as to keep my grubby mitts from mucking up sensitive components. Now lifting the CPU block from the socket carefully so as not to spill any residual liquid, even though it's technically non-conductive. And there's the bottom of the block, which needs a bit of cleanup now before we drop a fresh application of thermal paste on the new CPU for when we're ready to bolt things back up. Hmm, shiny. Let's remove our old Ryzen 9 3900X from the socket now and give it a quick cleanup as well before we put it off in reserve. There you go. You've served me well, my friend. Ah, but now it's time for the new AMD hotness, the Ryzen 9 5950X. Let's unbox it, shall we? With surgical precision, of course. 
we've got a bunch of fill cardboard in here, and here's our new CPU inside of its clear anti-static packaging. Removing that packaging from the box reveals the chip itself. Here's a quick close-up cameo shot for you. Again, the Ryzen 9 5950X is based on AMD's Zen 3 architecture with not only four extra CPU cores for a total of 16 versus my 12-core Ryzen 9 3900X that I had in the system, but also a significant IPC uplift courtesy of some major architectural optimizations and a new unified 32 megabyte L2 cache. In short, this chip should bring a major performance boost to my system for virtually any type of workload, whether it be some of the heavier duty content creation we do here at Hot Hardware or just kicking back for a little bit of gaming fun. But enough of all this chatter, it's time to get this many core beast into my system. First, let's determine the chip's pin one location labeled by this small copper triangle in this corner of the chip. And you can also see the pin configuration in this area is notched differently than the other corners of the chip. And here's the pin one location on the motherboard, which you can see etched into the socket and printed on the PCB. Now we just line those up, drop the chip in and drop the socket latch bar. So what kind of thermal paste do you ask? I'm partial to Arctic MX4, which has never failed me and should provide a solid thermal interface for our CPU block and the chip. I'm going with the five small dab points on the chip because that's what Arctic recommends. You might have your own preferred thermal paste application method, but this five dab approach has worked well for me, so I'm going with it. Now to crank our cooling block back down on the socket, going in a crisscross pattern while tightening things down, and then reconnect our send and return feeds back to the cooling block fittings. Beautiful, all buttoned up. Now to fill our distribution block reservoir with fresh coolant. I'm going with Cloud White and the premixed EK Cryo Fuel variety, and I can't vouch for its performance to be honest, though it has good ratings online, so I'm hoping for the best. First, let's fill the distribution block as high as it will go before turning on the system. Notice I've got a couple of paper towels in strategic locations, but I'm going to pull the paper towel laying on top of my Radeon RX 6800 XT before I hit the power button, just leaving the bottom paper towel covering the PSU cage area, just in case there are any drips or, heaven forbid, a leak. No leaks. No leaks, please. Knock on wood. All right, the moment of truth. You might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is he doing? The CPU block is dry. Fear not, my friends. When I hit the power button, it won't be for long, and that block will actually keep the CPU cool for even a minute or two on boot before heating up. Now it's just a bit of a race to keep the block as full as possible as my system pump pushes cooling liquid through the system. Okay, two hands for this one. And she boots. Phew, pressure's off. We've still got a few air bubbles to work out, but that's not too hard to get past just by pushing a little bit more coolant in and carefully mopping the bubbles up as they flow out of the top of the block. As you can see, things are running nice and cool, so let's dial things in a bit for our new processor, shall we? First, let's set the RAM speed to its XMP profile and a 3600 MHz clock speed to make sure we're optimizing memory bandwidth. Then let's flip on resizable bar support, or AMD Smart Access Memory in this case, so that our Ryzen 9 5950X processor can see the entire 16 gigabytes of memory on our Radeon RX 6800 XT GPU, which should help reduce transactions over PCI Express and reduce CPU overhead a touch for a bit of extra gaming performance. Finally, we'll dial down our system fan and pump profiles a bit to quiet down our acoustics. Since we have a pair of 240 millimeter radiators in here, just cooling the CPU alone, we have a ton of thermal headroom, so we can turn things way down to stealthy quiet levels while still remaining super cool. And there you have it. All those air bubbles are gone and our lighting is tweaked back to its super clean all white aesthetic, except for our RAM modules, unfortunately, which it seems Gigabyte's lighting control software no longer controls. So we have to get on that gigabyte, and I think that should be something we can get around pretty easy in the future, though. So let's look at performance real quick, and I mean that quite literally. This machine is seriously quick. A run at Cinebench R20 shows our CPU at 100% load, and in PBO,
PO or Precision Boost Overdrive, we see some really nice gains and an all-core boost of 4.25 GHz in creator mode. If you look closely, you can see my Ryzen 9 3900X used to score 7230 Cinebench points, but now we're pushing over 10,800 with four more cores in the aforementioned IPC lift of AMD's Zen 3 architecture over Zen 2. In short, this is a 50% gain in multi-threaded rendering throughput. Looking a bit closer at the numbers, 3 Mark Firestrike's physics test shows we've got about 33% more performance in the tank for gaming, while the X265 benchmark shows we've got over 45% more horsepower for encoding 1080p video. That'll offer some serious gains in rendering times. And all of this extra performance comes at the cost of, wait a minute, slightly less power consumption, whether at idle or at full load? Talk about a win-win. So there you have it, a quick take look at a serious performance upgrade and a brain transplant of AMD's new Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor. I'll say it again, I totally love my hand-built custom cooled main gear rig and it's now super powerful with 16 cores and 32 threads of AMD Zen 3. Stop by hothardware.com for our full Ryzen 9 5950X and 5900X review, as well as our review of AMD's hot new Radeon RX 6800 XT graphics card. Hit thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to help support us if you'd be so kind. I'm Dave Altavilla for hothardware.com. Thanks for stopping by.